it's late at night and I was reading a comment in my discord and it said how do we feel about Zog Rock and Anvil Smasher I said I had to think about it so I thought about it and here's kind of what I came to essentially so Zog Rock is a non-starter in Migwa we have too many heroes that are better than him it's just not gonna happen okay so you're only gonna play Zog Rock in Iron Jaws right so I did the math and, and I, I did this a long time before but the War Chanter buff is better than Zog Rock's buff it's better for a few different reasons it results in more damage right it doesn't spike like it's the, I don't know I, maybe maybe the math is not on my side here but I, I just kind of feel like having plus one damage is going to be better than than dealing more like one mortal it's just going to it's going to be more reliable but I could be wrong math nerds let me know in the comments <clears throat> um, the war chanter buff doesn't require a roll you just get it Zogrok is a two up so that's you know fine like that's great but it still fails one in six times so, so the war chanter just does that uh, the range is 15 inches for the war chanter uh, for Zogrok it's 12 so it's another little little benefit war chanter is cheaper right there's a lots of benefits the benefit that Zogrok gives is that it's a dealing mortal wounds that's we don't deal a ton of mortal wounds in iron jaws do we deal any impact mortals right um maybe the the gougers uh monstrous action might deal mortals but maybe it doesn't doesn't even deal any damage maybe so it's one of the only ways that iron jaws can get access to mortal wounds so that's 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 a relevant thing right um and that's really the only advantage okay so you're not going to take Zogrok over a war chanter right unless the meta's what whatever but it's 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 not so you're you'll always can take a war chanter so it means that what Zogrok is actually adding is like more buffs on the same unit of Gruntas. It's like stacking up the buffs. So Gruntas are obviously going to be the best go-to choice here. And if we look here uh, at these numbers, the Gore Gruntas um, with just the War Chanter buff are getting about like 20, 21 versus a four up save. And then if you throw Zog Rock on top, it's bumping it up about another five, not, not even five. Um, but the, that, those five are going through as mortal wounds, right? So we talked about that a little bit already. So does this help? Well, if you look here, this, this number right here, for those of you that are just listening, against a three up save, if you throw Zog Rock on top of a War Chanter buff on a reinforced unit of pigs, it deals enough damage to kill a unit of Ard Boys. As an example, it deals about 20 wounds against a three-up save, so it it makes it might make some difference. It might might actually make the difference. The difference between wiping out a unit completely and not is called smashing and bashing. So Z throwing Zog Rock on top of a War Chatter buff is definitely going to help you get your smashing and bashing chain activations off. It's, it, it will do that. So that is playing into some synergy in the army. The trick is gonna be knowing like where where to commit, when to commit, and when to call your WA and all this. But haven't you played a game of Iron Jaws where you were just a few wounds short of killing a unit and then they hit you and you lost a pick or two, right? Like, I feel like with Iron Jaws being kind of low, that one of the ways that we can help actually win games with with this army is to uh, become more reliable in our trades where we're trading pigs for higher than their value that's kind of how we have to play we're going to send in a wave or two or three in the first couple turns and then we need to come out of that like ahead we need to come out of those first two or three 
rounds ahead. Because if we come up behind, then we just get ground into dust. The end. So it might be enough. Like, it's actually worth kind of thinking about. It's actually worth kind of thinking about. Just to, again, deal some mortal wounds. Um, and we can stack up more buffs on, on, on a single target. So I don't know, like, it's kind of feeling like maybe there's there might be something here. So I started building lists. I built this list. So it's Mega Boss on Maw Crusher with Destroyin, Destroyer, Fasten, and Mighty Wild Leader, because he's the general. Zog, Zog Rock, and El Smasher. An Auric War Chanter with Fix and Beat, and then an Auric War Chanter with Get and Beat, and a Pouch of Null Dust, because there's no wizard here. So this is taking advantage of that new battle tactic. Right, the War Chanter is just going to move up the table. He's the get him beat one. He's going to be more forward deployed, and you just move him in. And then three reinforced units of Gore Gruntas. And then we had 140 points left over, so this could go into a few different things, but I think it's best used just as for a unit of Brutes, just to hold some objectives. So I, I was playing around with this list, and I, I kind of like this list, right? The idea is that you have these brutes that are going to be like multi-purpose. They, they can zone out your back line. They can do whatever. They are going to give your war chanters and Zog Rock, uh, Lookout, Sir, right? Like that's kind of just what they're there for. And then we have three units of Gore Gruntus. So it's like bam, Gore Gruntus, bam, Gore Gruntus, bam, Gore Gruntus. And then of course we have the Mega Boss in the back, and that's the idea. It's like okay, we're gonna we're gonna buff the Gore Gruntus and then send them in cool when i started building this list i realized that i was operating under a kind of assumption that it was going to have a mega boss on mock Russia, but that was like a given right like you go through these these patterns of making lists it's like well this is an auto include this is an auto include right and then i thought to myself like well what if we just don't include a mega boss on mock Russia? what if we just downgrade him to a mega boss on foot because we still want to take Destroyer. We still want to take Destroyer. And I, th I, so then I'm like, okay, cool. So what does this look like then? So I threw in a, so here's the list. It's a weird dump shaman with shaman of the chilled lands. So this is Horfrost, right? This is Horfrost. <clears throat> if we're going to buff the pigs, we might as well buff them even like to the ceiling. Uh, it's also uh, blizzard if, if, uh, if that's what we need. And then a second Weird Knob Shaman with Hand of Gork. I really like having both. I like having two. I like being able, I like the teleports. I think that the teleports are very important. This is a game of mobility. Whenever I play an army that doesn't have any kind of teleport, it, I feel it, it makes me sad. So both of these shamans are gonna sit outside of 30 all the way back. They're not there to unbind. They're there to cast Horfrost and teleport. That's what they're there for. Um, and they're also locuses, so some maps require locuses to take objectives, right? So they can teleport each other. And uh, the uh, the general with Shaman of the Chilled Lands also knows Hand of Gork. So you can kind of pick and choose as you as you want to. You can Mystic Shield and teleport, right? I, I don't know, but they both know it. And then Mega Boss on foot with Destroyer. I feel like we still need a Mega Boss because we need to double up commands. If not having any kind of Mega Boss sucks, and we also want to take Destroyer. Destroyer is such a good artifact, and it's it's still devastating on a Mega Boss on foot. And he's another good whore for us target too, right? You can send him in, Zog Rock Anvil Smasha, and then two War Chanters, one with Fix and one with Get Him. Nice. And then we have two reinforced units of Gorgruntus, so not three, but what we do have is a reinforced unit of Brutes. So that's ten Brutes. You can also Zog Rock Brutes as well. They they deal uh, quite a bit of damage. They deal more damage if all 10 get in than the pigs. So these are good teleport targets. They're good objective takers and holders. And a reinforced unit of Brutes is scary. Like it's scary. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah. And they throw a lot of dice. So you can get all the buffs that you want on them. Horror Frost obviously isn't very, as good, but Zog Rock is, is not as good as the pigs, but still good. Uh, yeah, very good. And then to round the list off, we have one more unit of Gorgretas to take the left flank, and then a Maw Grunta Gouja to take the right flank. 
So this list, the second list here, I really like it. It doesn't play a, a Maw Crusher. It doesn't play a Maw Crusher, but it, it plays very tactically, right? You, you kind of have some different tools, right? You have, you still have, you still have a two times six and one times three Gruntas, but that unit of Brutes is going to be good. They're going to be able to sit and take objectives, you know, and, and they, and they have a lot of Ren built in like they're, Brutes are just a great unit, very aggressively costed. And then we have a Gouger, a Maw Grunted Gouger. So, I don't know, you have, like I said, you have these two flanks, right? You got these two frontline guys, and then you're gonna teleport and buff, and then the uh, Mega Boss on foot is there to help, too. And he synergizes as well with Smash and Bastion, because he can just fight last. And if they kill him, well then he's gonna fight anyway. So it's great for the for destroyer turns. Like he goes in, cool combat page like I pop destroyer, and then we're gonna fight over here with this reinforced unit of pigs that has horn frost and and the war Chatter buff and Zogrog's buff, and they're gonna delete whatever is in front of them, and then bam, right? So I don't know. And we're two drops. Both these lists are two drops. Yeah, just interesting, interesting, interesting. I uh, I'm also kind of starting to think also too about. Um, controlling the first turn but taking the first turn and doing something very passive like just doing nothing getting a five point turn and then just sit, just like passing from there and then uh depending on the lit on the army like yeah getting double turned right away i don't know just something i was i was kind of thinking about uh just as an idea so uh, cool. Anyway, let me know what you think. Uh, have a look at these two lists. Oh, and then also, so this second list, the one that I like more, you can remove the unit of Gorgruntus, and you can remove the Gorgrunta Gouger, and instead you take a hack and crew, and then you have 90 points left over. So I was thinking Spider Riders. So instead of having three um, Gorgruntas on the left flank, now you have Spider Riders on the left flank. But instead of having a gouger on the right flank, you have a hack and crew on the right flank. So now it's a different tool, right? Now it's like, well, I'm gonna like run around in circles and build up some momentum, and then I'm gonna go in and jump over your your line and get into the squishies in the back. So the way that I imagine this is like, you know, turn one, it's like, okay, go Gruntas. We're gonna buff them up, right? We're gonna give maybe one Horfrost and one Zogrock, maybe both, or maybe both on one or something right so you're sending in these two missiles or maybe just this one missile and then the next turn you're going to do it again right buff up another group of that's actually exactly what you do you throw all your buffs on one unit of gruntus send them in wherever they're either teleporting or, or shooting them in straight up the board turn two you do the same thing with the second group and send them in and your hacking crew's running in circles this whole time two turns two turns of either running in circles or like running off onto the flank to like kill some screen right or like to kill some flanker that's trying to just grab objectives and then your spider riders are either zoning out the back line or they're shooting off to like grab some objective like something safe right because they're just five nerds and they're just gonna toe touch objectives and they're fast too like the spider riders i think are either 10 or 12 inch move they, they're probably 10 there's no way they're 12 and they ignore terrain they can like fly over terrain they have that rule right so like they're good like th that's their role their role is to screen and die if need be right protect your more valuable units yeah yeah and then so i mean like i think it's worth play testing i think for sure let me know what you think in the comments below like subscribe wow